Hello, it's Ruby and today I've just got some really exciting news to share with you. Well, I find it exciting. You probably already know from the title, but I recently got accepted into Oxford to study my master's in English literature and I just wanted to come on YouTube to tell you, I guess. I'm getting a lot of questions at the moment about what my plans are for the future, what I'll be doing next year, what I'm doing at the moment, and um, so this is, I suppose, a little life update to say that we'll be back in education in October. Something I just want to note before actually talking about the course, telling you about the course, is that even though this is a success, it comes in the aftermath of failure and failure and success are often very bound up together. I've been accepted to Oxford for my masters but that comes after a rejection for my undergrad. It's very easy I think especially on social media for us to solely share the success but I wanted to contextualize it and I guess just normalize failure. So way back in 2017 I applied to Oxford, I applied for English um, but I was rejected. I wasn't successful in my application and I have not been offered a place to study. I don't just say this but it was one of the best things that could have happened to me at the time. I learned so much from that rejection. It might seem silly, like it's just a university rejection, it's just a school, but it was everything to me at the time and I'd invested so much of my identity in academics and academic success. But getting rejected from Oxford was number one a wake up call for how much of my identity I based in academic success, but also it made me face failure, rejection head on, which is just an important thing like it's important to fail and you learn from failing and and I remember my teacher saying that at school you know like oh you learn from failure there's also that excellent Maya Angelou quote which I've got up here to read to you because I don't want to get it wrong but she says you may encounter many defeats but you must not be defeated in fact it may be necessary to encounter the defeat so you can know who you are what you can rise from, how you can still come out of it. And I knew these things about failure. I could recite them, recall them, tell you these lessons if you'd asked me to recite them, but I didn't understand them. And I realize now that I didn't understand them. But anyway, I am incredibly excited to be starting at Oxford in October. I'm so excited to learn and just to be learning in that space, to be learning with the Bodleian so close. So I actually found out that I've been accepted last month. I found out in early February but I didn't share it and I can't quite say why I didn't. It just felt weird, it felt strange, it didn't feel right to make a video that day saying that I got in. I'm sorry for not sharing it with you Sina. Yeah, so I found out and I wasn't expecting to find out that early. Like when I submitted my application beginning of January, they said that it could take 12 weeks to hit back. I put it to the back of my mind and uh, was trying not to think about it, I was like, there's no point worrying about it now. I didn't want to let myself get too attached to the idea. I was kind of like trying to keep a little bit of a distance from it because if I started thinking about it too much, I'd get too excited. So when the email came through and it said, you know, English faculty at Oxford, I was not expecting it. I was about to go out on a run and I saw the notification come through and it just said in the first line, that uh, you have been accepted. Oh my gosh. I'm actually out of breath. Like my heart's beating so much. I've been accepted. We are very pleased to offer you a place on the course and the attached certificate of offer provides you with the detailed information on your offer and the conditions. Our graduate admission cycle is highly competitive so please accept our warmest congratulations on your achievement. We very much look forward to being able to welcome you to Oxford. Oh my gosh. One of the things I've realised I love most about English is manuscripts and kind of the physical object of, of books, the physical object the ephemerality of paper and how against all odds books, manuscripts, papers, plays, poems, all of this survives even though paper is so easily destroyed. I find that fascinating and that's a general undercurrent to a lot of the essays that I will write. They kind of acknowledge this, acknowledge this, this kind of like tenderness and the Oxford course more than any other master's program I looked at is so manuscript heavy and um, there's a whole module which teaches you how to handle and learn from manuscript and so the skill set that can be learned from this course in terms of manuscript studies is just so great and you actually get to look at real manuscripts which makes me very excited. So specifically the course which I will be doing is the 1550 to 1700 English literature which is Shakespeare, Milton. Actually like when I've told friends and family that this is the course I've, I I'm going to be doing, lots of people have been quite surprised because I love Victorian literature, like that's not a secret. And to be honest, I was really torn as to which one to apply for. But even though I prefer reading 
Victorian literature. I prefer studying early modern literature. Again, like linking to that ephemerality. Mass production of literature wasn't so much a thing in early modern England. Also, if I want to learn how to handle, use manuscripts, the early modern was better for that. If you told me at the beginning of undergraduate that I'd end up doing a master's in early modern literature, I would not have believed you. I've always liked Shakespeare, I've liked watching his plays, reading them, but I never would have thought I'd study it. It would become my kind of favourite thing to study. It was actually totally thanks to two modules I did at Exeter. If you're at Exeter and you do English, you have to do the theatricals module and the life and death module. Both of them are just fantastic and probably the two best modules I did on my English degree. So yeah, went with my gut, studying 1550 to 1700 literature. So, so excited and I guess I'm just looking forward to sharing my year studying the course with you um, come October. It's also nice to have a time frame, honestly, because before I'd heard back, I didn't know what I'd be doing next year. Like if I didn't get into the masters, I wasn't really sure what I'd be doing next year. And there's just so much space ahead when you graduate, like academic years, like separate everything quite neatly. Whereas leaving university, it's just like this vast expanse of blankness. It's quite nice having something, something structured in place. Anyway, I've got my induction for the course this afternoon. It's just on Zoom and looking forward to that. So just to kind of finish this video, I wanted to share a vlog from when I went to Oxford last week. My mum and I drove up to Oxford and took a look around the city, took a look around the college and it was just a really nice day out and also reminded me how much I love Oxford as a city. Uh, there's so much history steeped into all of the brickwork, the cement, it just, the city seems to breathe with it. I was reading, actually, I'm reading Demon Voices at the moment and Philip Pullman studied at Oxford, he also set his dark materials in Oxford and one of the essays in here was about uh, the richness of Oxford, the richness of, uh, the richness of kind of being in Oxford as a city. So this is from his essay, Dreaming of Spires. The commonest question writers get asked is where do you get your ideas from? The truthful answer is, I don't know. They just turn up. But when you are wandering about with your mouth open and your eyes glazed, waiting for them to do so, there are a few better places to wander about than in Oxford, as many novelists have discovered. I put it down to the mists from the river, which have a solvent effect on reality. A city where South Parade is in the north and North Parade is in the south, where paradise is lost under a car park, where the maudlin gargoyles climb down at night and fight with those from New College, is a place where, as I began by saying, likelihood evaporates. So we've just seen Jesus College, which was just unbelievable. I actually can't believe it. I think slightly in shock at the moment. Oh my gosh, and then right round the corner is the rapid camera. Oh my god, like Oh my So we're now here at the Bodleian Library. I just can't get over the architecture. After looking around the college and the Bodleian, we went to Bird and Blend. My mum got a mint pistachio tea and I had a matcha latte. And yes, I maintain that the blueberry matcha is the best one. Afterwards, we went to Scriptum, which is this really unique old fashioned stationery shop. And quite a few people who watched my videos had actually recommended I visit. And was definitely not disappointed. I would highly recommend it if you're in Oxford. All in all, it was a lovely day out and it's just made me even more excited to start studying here. Just wanna say as always, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here on my academic journey, on your own academic journey. Just genuinely, I'm very grateful for this community and very grateful for the support of this community, but also very grateful to have grown alongside you and for us to have grown together academically and as people and, um, yeah, let me know in the comments where you are at the moment, where you've got to, I suppose. I think it's I think it's always really nice for us to reflect on how far we have come. Anyway, thank you so much and I hope that you have a productive week. Or more than a productive week, I should say.